My name is Greg Gust with the National Weather Service in Grand Forks. Uh, Gregory.gust.noaa.gov, you can see there. And you can call our office, uh, area code 701 795 5127, if you have any questions uh, regarding the status of the flood. Thank you. So, this uh, bottom line up front document, as you can see, uh, we have a slow, gentle thaw process that has been continuing and should continue uh, in through the early part of April. So certainly the next seven to ten days of near to above freezing temperatures with very little expected for precipitation across the basin. Uh, for the remainder of this week and into the weekend, uh, the far southern Red River Basin is rising through moderate and major flood stages in a few key spots. Uh, I'll go over the details here in the next line, streams and rivers into Wapton and Breckenridge those are now pretty much have all the snow melt water into them and they will fluctuate uh, at the near to below minor flood stage uh, depending on reservoir releases that will be timed on and off through the coming weeks. The streams and rivers know that are now coming into Fargo-Moorhead from the south so that includes the main stem red uh, from Wapton Breckenridge as well as the wild rice, North Dakota wild rice. Those will continue steady rises through moderate flood stage uh, through this week and into the weekend. Um, the south branch of the Buffalo River uh, coming through Sabin, Minnesota is starting to rise and it will rise toward action at minor stages here as we get into the weekend, early part of the coming week. Uh, in red you'll see that bullet item, the Red River at Fargo-Moorhead and the North Dakota Wild Rice River at Abercrombie are again expected to rise through moderate flood stage uh, through Sunday. Next week and into the week, the coming weekend after, we should see more of the central Red River Basin tributaries on both the North Dakota and Minnesota sides coming in, and then the central part of the Red River starting to rise as well. Uh, the, so that's the southern Red River Basin will start seeing crests. So in North Dakota, first of all, we expect the Cheyenne, the Maple, the Rush, and Goose Rivers forecast that could be starting up even this weekend and into the early part of next week. Uh, again, not yet. Uh, into major flood stages, but certainly moving into the minor, possibly into moderate flood stages uh, through the coming week. And on the Minnesota side, we expect the north branch of the Buffalo, the remainder of that watershed to start coming uh, up and rising. The Minnesota wild rice to be rising, we'll have forecasts out for that, either starting this weekend or into next week, and the Marsh River possibly in the latter part of the week. So we do have crests possible next week. The North Dakota wild rice at Abercrombie, I don't know why I have a BR in there, and the Red River at Fargo-Moorhead uh, could be happening late next week. Uh, you'll see in red that we have the Red River at Fargo-Moorhead possible crest on or around April 3rd. So notice that that's coming in uh, well below the 50th percentile. On the Red River main stem, we would continue to see rises and river opening uh, through Halstead and up into Grand Forks. Uh, still, when we'll start river forecasts for those points sometime uh, here, either on this weekend or next week, we'll start seeing those river forecasts starting to show up on the web page. So we'll be having these daily calls now starting on Monday of next week, and I'll be sending out that webinar invite uh, here later today or tomorrow. Okay, and there's the seven-day precipitation here up at Grand Forks, 2200, it's down at Fargo five hundredths in the last week. The week before that, thirty-six hundredths, well this is the total for the two-week period, thirty-six hundredths in Grand Forks, eleven hundredths in Fargo. So again, a normal weekly precipitation from pretty much throughout the last part of February, March into early April should be a quarter of an inch. Uh, at this point in March and into April, a quarter to a half inch would be near normal. So we're staying well below that. And for the two-month total precipitation, our liquid equivalent here in Grand Forks is only half an inch. In Fargo, 32 hundredths. Um, on that map that I'm showing, there's that light blue ring around us. That's a radar estimate, and so that's showing uh, where the radar is not covering our precipitation very well. But I would estimate, again, not much over that 35, 40, 50, 60 hundredths, a couple of spots. Uh, maybe edging up a little bit higher here, but not much. And then that's looking across the area, the far larger northern plains area, 
You can see back toward Bismarck, 46 hundredths of an inch measured in the last two months. Down in Sioux Falls, uh, inch and 17. Down in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, an inch and 72 hundredths. That would be closer to what a normal precipitation amount would be for us during this time period. So again, we're skipping, missing most of the uh, events that have happened in the last two months. There's kind of the boundary that shows pretty much, again here, that's the area that is running an inch to an inch and a half below normal precipitation during the last two months uh, up here across most of North Dakota and much of central and northern Minnesota, while southern Minnesota uh, near to above normal uh, in some spots there. The week one, so that's forecast precipitation through the next seven days, so that's the Thursday of next week, and we're only showing that tenth to a quarter of an inch in the far southern Red River Basin, and that's really uh, a Friday-Saturday uh, type event. And we are expecting mainly rain in, in uh, the far southern basin itself and then turning to a little mixed precipitation as you get a little further toward Minnesota, into Minnesota. So again, light rain or light mix of rain and snow. Uh, expected Friday night into Saturday. I have this link here and going, going. So here's a nice little map. You can maybe see that website on there. It's off the Weather Service office in Duluth has put this together. Down near White Rock Dam and slide down on the bar here a little bit and you can see that that's got temperatures and hourly temperatures now from today moving into Friday. And you'll notice that the low temperature maybe early Friday morning is still near 30 degrees. That's not going to stop water that's uh, moving in ditches and rivers at this point. And then from there on, pretty much that's all above freezing for the next seven days. Though the probability of precipitation bumps up into the 20s and 30s, the actual amount of moisture, now you can see this is actually a Saturday mainly Saturday, a couple of hundredths of an inch down there. And then uh, Tuesday of next week, another brief skiff that could come across that southern portion. And that's coming across uh, pretty much that White Rock area and into the Wapton Breckenridge area, a little bit up toward Fargo. So I'm going to move the dot up toward Fargo. You can see the same type of calculations that will show up on here. And there's, again, uh, near or a little bit cooler up in the Fargo area on Friday morning still, but we're going to warm up and steadily and then from the weekend and into next week, just touching near freezing. But again, not enough to really stop things in the process. And again, the amount of precipitation is negligible at Fargo Morgan itself this weekend. And again, just that trace to a couple hundredths next Tuesday. And as we get up toward Grand Forks, And you can play this game at home. Just go to weather.gov slash DLH for Duluth and then DSS table to pick that up. And here's up at Grand Forks. So a little cooler on the overnight temperatures, but again, warm during the day, a few hours dropping below freezing. But in general, the rivers are going to open up and keep opening, and that's just going to keep a slower thaw process uh, through Grand Forks and points north, and nothing really showing up for precipitation probabilities. So again, most of the opening, most of that will be south of Grand Forks and into the Halstead area, but up a little bit in toward Grand Forks area itself. So now going back to our web page and the actual rivers, and just to show you here, what is going on with the, so we right now have, um, first of all, I'll click on Wapaton and you can see that graph showing up on the side. And you can see that the blue line, oops, the blue line is what the river has been doing for the last couple of days. You can see it's currently below action stage, but we're expecting it to rise back up into that action stage just based on local inflow coming in and releases uh, coming out of White Rock Dam there. As we go up, here's the wild rice coming in at Abercrombie. You can see that that's rising along the snowmelt coming out of Richland County and, and uh, Sargent County there. And the it's already come through minor into moderate flood stage. It'll continue that rise through moderate and into major flood stage early next week. 
uh, further up the river as the red comes in together with that. Uh, we do not put out a forecast yet for Hickson, and that's simply because their forecast flood stage is quite a bit higher, but that'll be coming out here a little bit later, um, late this week or into the weekend. But into Fargo, where that minor flood stage is pretty low, we already have that forecast out. Uh, it's coming through minor flood stage, and you can see heading into moderate flood stage early next week, and then even into major flood stage as we get into the end of next week. The only other river that's really opened up at this time is the south branch of the Buffalo here at Sabin, and so we have a forecast out for that, which is showing rising into the action stage and through the weekend and then into minor flood stage early part of next week. Now keep in mind that these, unless they explicitly declare a crest, these are just showing the rises. They're not showing the how high it's eventually going to get. So stay tuned for those. But the rest of the rivers, the Cheyenne at Kindred, uh, any of the Cheyenne motion is still relatively quiet. We're going to start seeing more water coming into Bald Hill and being released, and then more of the local inflow showing up later this week. So to get back out of here and back to this, there's the actual, well, let's see. I'm going to click one further. There's the actual, uh, from the model, what we see happening at Abercrombie. Now, these black dots are river measurements, yet here is the river forecast. These are down here are the components that are of various flows that come in that make that overall flow uh, coming into Abercrombie. Right now, there's the observed, and notice that this forecast is below that. Uh, part of that reason is because there's ice still on the river. So we're measuring higher but that ice should be breaking up and allowing that to go down a bit. So they're keeping the actual flood forecast a bit below there, anticipating the breakup. And then there's just these small amounts of rain that are expected to come in, uh, actually showing up right in here. So there would be normal precipitation. And then here's the temperature regime up at the top. So you can see, starting out at the red line here, this is also the 3rd of April showing that possible crest coming in at Abercrombie and that's somewhere above 19 feet. And then for whoops, Fargo, there you can see the track of the current measurements coming in and then you can see a variety of forecasts in there and that has to do with some different contingencies based on the timing at Abercrombie, based on, on some of those other issues that would come in on, on base and timing there's the expected crest area somewhere around uh, 7 o'clock 7 o'clock in the morning on the 3rd of April. And that's, again, so we put out that uh, on the update this morning of, as a possible crest for Fargo. Okay, so what's going on week two? Well, that's when that stuff's going to be coming in. We're expecting near normal temperatures near normal precipitation as we get to the end of next week and into that second week. And so near normal again for this time frame could be a quarter to a half an inch of precipitation. So those amounts are not too difficult for the system to, to handle. Um, it would be inch to two inch amounts that would become more significant in affecting how the overall uh, flow would, would, would go. Uh, here's through the rest of April. Not a clear climate signal showing up for that. Um, again, equal chances overall for the area, so stay tuned. And that we do tend overall in the April, May, June time frame. This is still from the 19th of March climate update, and that says a tendency toward the warmish and wettish signal throughout the spring period. So what about these? So at this point, those flood risk categories for the south part of the basin, well, we may not hit moderate at Wapaton. We are looking at hitting a major flood stage at Abercrombie. We are looking at hitting up into major flood stage at Fargo. So a lot of these probabilities are still in play. Fargo, if we come in at 31, 32 feet, is below the 50th percentile. That affects this area around here to a great degree, but recognize that most of the snow melt 
and runoff and the much wetter soils are all up in the central part of the basin. So that still has to make itself known. These probabili probabilities for the central part and upper part of the basin are still pretty much in play yet until the main thaw and runoff is clearly underway for those areas as well. Once we start those deterministic flood forecasts, like is going on for Abercrombie, or the wild rice at Abercrombie, like is going on for uh, Wapaton and the Red River at Fargo, then those become the primary guidance for, for any forecast expectations. And that's the bottom line again, uh, just so you can take a peek at this. And we will be sending this out uh, to all the eBlast participants. And at this point, I'm going to open it up for questions. <laughs>